In today's video, we're answering the question, why are my statements admissible against me? So these are statements that you may have made to the police or to somebody else outside of the courtroom, and now they're trying to use it against you. You remember your right to remain silent. You've seen this in every TV show and every movie that involves the law. You have a right to remain silent, and that's why we recommend that people use it so much is because if you don't use it and you start saying things, it may be possible for the government to use those statements against you. This is why it happens. It's because there are certain rules in Arizona and the country that allow for those statements to come into court. So let's talk about this idea of what's called hearsay. Hearsay is a big, broad term. We spend a lot of time on this in law school. We fight about this all the time in court. It's this idea that statements that are made outside of court cannot come into court. The reason why is because those statements are not reliable. We cannot cross-examine those statements. So let's say, for example, something happens. A and B get into an altercation. A and B are, are now adverse to each other. A is the victim, B is the defendant. So they're saying that B struck A. Now, if A comes into court and says, B hit me, that's okay because A is somebody who is the recipient of that. A was there, A witnessed it in person, and when A's in court, we get to cross-examine A. We can say, isn't it true that X, Y, and Z? Isn't it true you contributed to this and blah, blah, blah. We can go through the whole situation. But if A doesn't come into court, if A doesn't want anything to do with this, and a police officer then comes into court and says, well, A told me, the police officer, that X, Y, and Z happened, that's not admissible. That's hearsay. That that is very, very problematic because now we don't get to cross-examine A. We can't ask A any questions. We can't look at their body language. We can't look at their demeanor. We can't do anything with A. And the officer who wasn't there, who didn't see this interaction, also doesn't know anything. They only know what A told them. So this is a big problem. That type of, of uh, statement cannot come into court. That's classic hearsay. It's not admissible. But now we're talking about B. So B is the defendant. B is somebody who was also there. B is the one being charged with crimes. And if B now tells the officer, yes, I hit A, yes, I punched A, now that statement, yes, it happened outside of court. It's technically hearsay. It's not in court. But the government is going to try to use those statements against B. Even though this happened out of court, even though it's actually hearsay, what they're saying is, what the law says, what the rules of criminal procedure and the rules of evidence and all these different rules say, is that this type of language, those types of admissions can come into court. They're allowed to come into court. It's called, it's called a party opponent exception to hearsay. B is a party to the case and B is an opponent to the actual case here. The B is the defendant. They're opposing the charges. So this is an exception to hearsay. And the reason why this, this gets in is because they're saying it's more reliable. The, the, the law says that a statement like this is going to be more reliable. It's something that should be admitted because B would not be making those statements unless it was, it was truthful, unless that's what actually happened. Typically, the way that we view things in human nature is that B is not going to admit to a bunch of stuff that would harm B unless it were true. So, so they, B is not going to get out there and just start saying a bunch of random things. If B said that, that X, Y, and Z happened, it's probably true. And even though it's hearsay, we're going we're gonna to let that into court. We're going to make it admissible. It's going to come in. And so that's just one of many different exceptions. Hearsay is a really complicated part of the law. Spent a lot of time on this, as I said. There are different, there's basically hearsay. There's things that are exceptions to hearsay. So we acknowledge that they are hearsay, but we're going to let them in anyways. And then there's just other things that we consider to be non hearsay. It's just not hearsay. Why? It looks like hearsay. It probably is hearsay, but we're just not going to call it hearsay. There's all these different categories, and it can be difficult to figure out how this stuff is going to be intertwining with one another, what statements can come in, what can not come in what types of questions or answers are going to elicit a response that's going to be hearsay. And so when you, when you watch a lot of these TV shows and lawyer shows and you hear objections, 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 they're, they're objecting to the form of the question that's going to call for hearsay or they're objecting to the answer because it is hearsay. It's something that requires a lot of practice and a lot of uh, sort of repetition in order to get good at it. And that's what we do every single day. So this is why your admissions may be admissible against you. Now people will call and they'll say, well, I, I said X, Y, and Z. Is that going to totally destroy my case? It's complicated. It, it may not help your case, but it may not be as damning as you may think it, it, it would be. There are other different ways that we can get this stuff uh, thrown out 
or just prevent it from even getting to the point where it becomes an issue. So this is why you'd wanna give us a call. There are other different things, things like spontaneous utterances, spontaneous statements, excited utterances, all other different rules that may be able to get certain statements into court, or we can argue that they fall outside of those exceptions and they should not be admissible because they're not reliable. There's other ways that we attack the government's attempts to get certain statements into court. So definitely give us a call. We offer free case evaluations. If you're watching this video because you're concerned that you made admissions, try not to worry about it too much. That's done, it's in the past. Give us a call. Let's figure out how we can help and move this into the future. We offer free case evaluations. We'll have you come in, we'll talk about it specifically as it relates to your case. Go a lot more in depth than we can do in a YouTube video, but we look forward to speaking with you soon and thanks for watching. <music>